how many people can fit on Earth? Well, if we're talking literally, 1 trillion 224 billion. But there are two other answers to this question. How do I know this? Uh, the outbreak ends always badly. The unprecedented increase in the number of human beings on the planet. But that's the limit. No, no, you, 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 could, you could sustain more, you just have to be better organised. The Earth has a surface area of about 510 million kilometres squared, but about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, making it a mere 153 million kilometres squared that we have to stand on. But how tightly can we pack this in? This is a one by one meter square, and we're gonna see how many people we can put in it, and then scale that up until we cover the whole world. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Did you know that actually yes, there's a small percentage of uh, viewers that are actually not subscribed? <laughs> so if you could subscribe to the Yellow is a Nice YouTube channel, it would make a massive difference. Is that seven? <laughs> Mia, do you reckon you could get in? We could, we could get yeah. one more. Yeah, yeah, we could get one more. Yeah. How many is that? How many is that? No. Wait. One, two, And we can't get any more. With that successful bit of science concluded, we know that eight people can fit in a one by one meter square. Times that by 153 quadrillion, that will fill all the space, giving us a total population, one quintillion, 224 quadrillion people. But you and me both know that isn't going to happen. As much as we've all wondered what it'd be like if we stood shoulder to shoulder, <coughs> okay, maybe it's just me. But either way, this isn't going to happen soon. What's much more likely is we run out of something else before space. <laughs> to get to the slightly more practical answer to this question, we need to know what humans need to survive. Our bodies need energy, so we have food to produce energy, and water, I'm not sure why, but primary school science taught me that, so we'll go with it. But about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. This makes things a lot easier when we need a drink. But unfortunately, you can't just go and slurp up anything. That's unfortunately not how it works. The amount of water we can actually drink is only 2.5% of what's on Earth. For context, if this was the world's water, we could only drink this much. I mean, that's still 34 quintillion 650 quadrillion litres, or just less than two arctic oceans. But that 2.5% is made up of all sorts of stuff. Stuck in the ice caps, frozen mud, clouds, the list goes on. We actually only have access to a third of that fresh water, as that's the stuff in the rivers, lakes, and caves we can reach. Meaning only 0.8% of the world's water is actually available to access. I mean, yeah, that's still 10 quintillion liters. However, that's only just enough to fill the South China Sea. But an average person uses 179 litres a day, so we have enough water for 193 quadrillion people, right? Wrong. It's not just the average person who uses water, though. Water is used in loads of things, such as manufacture, industry, and other stuff. In 2014, the world used 4 quadrillion litres of the stuff. That's 1,400 litres each per day. Day. And as the population scales, so does industry, meaning we actually only have enough for 2.8 trillion people. So we're fine, right? Water shortage. They are short on water. Robbing them of groundwater. If we have so much water, then why do we keep running out? I mean, water scarcity is still an issue. Despite having absolutely loads of the stuff, we can't necessarily clean it or get it to where it needs to be. But in a perfect utopia, water isn't going to stop us. The next vital ingredient in human life is food. Now, hold into your hats because if you're a beloved meat eater, you might find the next few scenes disturbing. I have a graph that genuinely blew my mind. As we know from earlier, 71% of the world is water and 29% is land, as illustrated. Of all the land, only 71% of that is habitable. The rest is either this, or this, or this. So far, humans can't change what is habitable and what isn't, as long as we don't... Yeah, that. But what we can do is choose what we do with our land. 1% of our land is lakes and rivers. Which, I mean, if you ask me, that's, that's, not, that's not land, that's, that's water. 
but we'll go with it. The other 1% is like towns and cities and industry and other stuff. But the rest of our land isn't quite divided up how you would expect. The third biggest thing, taking up 11% of all habitable land, is shrubbery. The second is slightly more expected, with 39 million kilometers squared, 37% of all habitable land, it's forests. But finally, rolling in with the gold medal, with 50% of all habitable land, half of the world is agriculture. Cows, crops, pigs, pickles make up half the world. I think this is kind of a shame. Yeah, but do you want to eat tonight? Well, yes. And if everybody's going to eat, we need to use that land. Or do we? Meat and animal products take up about 77% of the world's farming land, yet only provide 20% of the calories, meaning they're really, really space inefficient. Moo, I am a cow. But meat is good at some stuff. It provides loads of protein, and we need that for a healthy lifestyle. Moo, I am a cow. And while yes, that is technically true, it's still only about a third of the protein we eat, meaning we can live without them. Now, I know for some of you this hurts to hear, and I must disclose, I'm not vegan. Hell, I'm not even vegetarian. But stay with me on this. If we were to remove meat and animal products from the food chain, we would use a third of the land we do now and have more nutrients than we did before. This would give us 33 million kilometers squared of room. That's more space than just emptying Africa. But before we force everyone to be vegan, if we stayed eating how we do now and used all the available land, not only would we be very sad, have no room and screw the environment, we wouldn't even double the population. And bearing in mind not everybody eats enough anyway, that's not a good idea. But in a vegan utopia, we could theoretically two, triple the population. Three, Energy, energy, energy. Well, in our perfect utopian sustainable world, energy isn't going to be an issue. We survived for ages without it, and in my utopia, we can go back to that, or, I don't know, solar panels or wind turbines. The technology exists, we just don't use it. But as it stands, in 2019, we used 173,340 terawatt hours. That's a lot. In fact, given that a light bulb is about seven centimeters wide, we could line them up in a massive grid that covered Mauritius and have them all turned on for a whole year, and that would equal the rest of the world's power output. But in order to use power, we have to make power. And currently this power is provided by this sort of thing, which is kind of an issue because of this sort of thing. But if we suddenly get rid of all this, we would have another issue. So in other words, we're f- <laughs>